On today's World Inside, the Afghanistan Northern Resistance Forces against the Taliban standing their ground while U.S. and Allied forces make their hasty retreat. What keeps them motivated? Direct answers from former Afghan diplomat Ahmed Wali Massoud, the younger brother of late resistance leader Ahmed Shah Massoud. Our proposal is the same as the proposal of the people of Afghanistan about the very essential and basic rights of the human being. And inside the Taliban process of putting together an open, inclusive government, straight from the Taliban spokesperson in Qatar. We are Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan for the last 20 years. Here is our host, Tian Wei. Hello and welcome to World Insight. I'm Tian Wei. We begin today's program with the latest in Afghanistan. Fighting has stopped in most parts of Afghanistan after the Taliban moved into Kabul, but in Panjshir Valley, forces under the former Afghan First Vice President Abdullah Saleh and Ahmad Massoud, the son of the former anti-Taliban leader Ahmad Shah Massoud, are resisting Taliban rule. According to Russian media, the Taliban delegation arrived in Panjshir on 24th to begin talks with resistance forces. Ahmad Massoud called for an inclusive government, saying that the war will be unavoidable if the Taliban refused the dialogue. I got a chance to talk exclusively with Ahmed Wali Massoud, the brother of Ahmad Shah Massoud, who chairs now the Massoud Foundation, who also served earlier as the former Afghan ambassador to the United Kingdom. We understand you work very closely with Ahmad Massoud, how are the situation for Ahmad Massoud and his soldiers now in Panjshir Valley? He is there. We are there. We will not fire. We would really prefer negotiation. And but if the Taliban attack, of course, we don't have no choice except to resist. Well, as you know, that uh, it's almost a week since the Taliban came to Kabul, mm. and then uh, Mr. Ahmad Massoud he went to Panjshir. And I came with a delegation, with a of delegation of the political leaders. I came to Pakistan to talk the dialogue. We were both in Kabul a week ago. And he went to Panjshir. I came with delegation to talk to the Pakistani authority. Now, since then, of course, the Taliban have been preparing to attack Panjshir. But we said we warned them not to attack Panjshir. But that, that will be a catastrophic thing. Better to make a dialogue. So eventually the Taliban somehow agreed to make a dialogue and now they are preparing to really kind of exchange delegation. This is the initial uh, talking. It's still that has not taken place, but they have been introduced that they will sit together. But probably once the mechanism has worked out, then they will send a high delegation to see how, what, what, uh, about the issue to talk about. When you say high delegation, Mr. Massoud, would you be more specific? How high is it likely to be, Mr. Massoud himself? No, it's still it's not known who will be, but they said the first contact will pave the way for a higher delegation. So this is the first contact. As soon as they work out a the mechanism, then there will be a high delegation introduced. Hmm. What kind of mechanism do your side expect uh, it should uh, be? Uh, what are some of the most important elements, Mr. Massoud? Well, of course, our proposal is the same as the proposal of the people of Afghanistan. What we are saying, the first thing is that for the Taliban to curb the violence, to curb the breaking house, breaking house of the people, to stop the selective killing of the politicians and commandos, to stop intimidating the people across Afghanistan 
And then, of course, let's talk about the human rights, basic rights, about the uh, election, about the freedom of press, freedom of media, about the very essential and basic rights of the human being. Let's talk about that one, because something that every citizen of Afghanistan needs to uphold that one. So therefore, we are not demanding something high. But what we are doing, we are proposing something that these values have to be respected mm. first. These values is something that is universal values. That's what we propose to the Taliban. At this point, we have been hearing from Ahmad Masood talking about inclusive government. Very much correlates with the adjective that the spokesperson of the Taliban that I interviewed a few days earlier gave to me. It seems that both sides are using the same adjectives. Yes, but maybe definition might differ. How Let's is your definition? Government. Well, inclusive government in our uh, definition is that all ethnicities must be involved. There are four major ethnicities in Afghanistan, Pashtun, Tajik, Hazar, Uzbek, and the rest might be a smaller one. But these four ones, the Taliban is one of them. So therefore, if we can have a power sharing based on the ethnicities, and the structure of the power should be as such that all ethnicities can see themselves in the process of uh, decision making. We understand now, uh, according to the spokesperson of Taliban and reported by the media as well, some of the former Afghan government officials, for example, uh, former President Karzai, Dr. Abdullah Abdullah, were among the people being consulted by the Taliban's delegation about forming a future quote unquote government. Now, how close are you uh, from Mr. Masood and yourself been working with these names? Dr. Abdullah and Mr. Kaze, they are politicians. They have been there for 20 years. They have been part of the government, but they do not represent the ethnicities of Afghanistan. They do not represent us. So therefore, it's their thing. Of course, they can represent themselves, but not our side. So you don't think the Islamic Emirate of Af Afghanistan is going to be the case that you are referring to. That's not the government that you want, which is the government no, advocated by the Taliban side right now. Not really, because that's, that's uh, I mean, they have come by force. And so therefore, their emirate is not today's uh, world. That's not what people of Afghanistan needs. Okay. Because emirates belong to very, very old type, old time. So today, Afghanistan needs something after 20 years of some sort of democracy, we really want to make progress, not to go backward. Mm. Mr. Masood, according to Ahmad Masood, if the negotiation doesn't work out, he, together with the fighters in the Panjshir Valley, would resort to fight. What does that mean? If the negotiation doesn't go well, if it happens, then they will fire first toward the Taliban? What does that mean exactly? No, I think that we would not fire. We would really prefer negotiation. And But if the Taliban attack, of course, we don't have no choice except to resist the fighting of the Taliban. Resistance means that not to fight, but to resist the fight, to stand against the fight. So therefore, at this moment, if that happens, then it means the resistance will not be only limited to Panjshir. Already it is in Parwan, Kapisa, Baglan, and some central part of Afghanistan. So if they attack that one, then it means that the resistance will expand across the country. And there is no doubt. Resistance comes from the people. At this moment, the geography of the resistance have expanded in different other fields, like political fields, like cultural fields. So women of Afghanistan are the big force of the resistance because their values are different from the Taliban. The civil society, a big force of the resistance. Mm -hmm. The younger generation of Afghanistan, which makes up 70% of the population, they are force of the resistance. Because all their values differ from the Taliban, so therefore the resistance will not be limited only to Panjshir, it will engulf across Afghanistan. I see, Mr. Masu, so you are saying that your side has the power to motivate all of these uh, social groups that you refer to if the negotiation didn't work out. Is that what you're trying to say? That you have the power? Exactly. To... Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Okay. Got it. That, that, that will happen. All right. Happen. Let's talk about the fighters. There are mixed reports in the media. Some talk about a few hundred 
together with Mr. Masood and Mr. Saleh in the Panjshir Valley. Others talk about several thousands. There are also reports talking about the Taliban forces gathering at the so-called entrance of the Panjshir Valley. So what exactly is the situation now, Mr. Masood? Well, this is a military secret. So of course, no one can disclose their own number. So therefore, it's, it, it must remain like that. There are reports that Mr. Masood talk about the ammunition and weapons that his resistant front has been gathering over the years to prepare, quote, for this moment. Whether you think that is capable enough in terms of uh, arm, arms and ammunition against the Taliban? Well, let's see again. There's something that we cannot disclose. I see. And we have to keep it like that. Mr. Masood, though, I know you are in Europe, for example, to persuade the governments and the public to support you and to donate to you. So what kind of support are you looking for? Well, what we are seeking for, we seek for the international support for a good cause of Afghanistan. We are warning the international community that they have to really help to see that Afghanistan will eventually be able to really make an inclusive government in there. We are saying that the international community for 20 years, they were there, but out of a sudden they uh, came out of Afghanistan. Now the country is in a very dire situation. We are saying that, well, we really have to support a just mm -hmm. cause in Afghanistan, be it from other side, from any, other, from any side. We are saying that, well, this is the plight of the Afghan people. We do not want to go back 20 years back from Taliban to Taliban. We really have to make progress ahead. And we are really seeking that not to recognize the government unless there is a legitimate government, unless a government which has come by the consent of the people, mm -hmm. not by force, unless there is a government which could represent all ethnicities in Afghanistan, a government which could really uphold the human right, the man right, the woman right, all the rights, all the very essential I rights. See. That's what we are really looking for the international community to mm. see. What are the responses you are getting so far? Well, so far they have been kind of still they are in a shock. They know they, every day they are getting reports from inside Afghanistan. At this moment they are in shock. They don't know what to do, where to turn. But they are kind of waiting slowly. They are coming to turn. At the moment their priority is to get their citizen out of Afghanistan. That's their priority. But we hope as soon as their priority is met, then they will have to really look very deep into Afghanistan. Mm. What sort of system will be there? Because if they ignore Afghanistan, the problem in Afghanistan will not be only limited in the boundary of Afghanistan. It will affect everybody, especially the neighboring countries, extra regional, and the whole world, it will expand. For example, if we let the whole thing to go the same way as it goes, mm. maybe so many terrorists will be there. The terrorist hub will be in Afghanistan then they can inflict a heavy casualty in the whole region, in the whole world. That's what we are looking for, the international community, to take care of these things before it's too late. I see. Because when my brother was alive 20 years back, he warned before come, when, Tal when Taliban was created. He warned the international community. He came to Europe. He came to France. He went to Strasbourg. He warned the international community of upcoming terrorist activity which will affect the whole world. But those warnings were not really listened. They were not carefully studied. Then what happened today? We are having a lot of problems in the whole world like that. If only those warnings were taken serious by today, we would not have been in this situation. We hope that this time, when we warn the situation, they have to take it seriously before it's too late, I and see. then it will affect the whole world. So therefore, if they do listen, that's good for the benefit of their country, of their people. If they don't listen, of course, they will have the same fate as us. But Ambassador Masood, I'm sure you are aware, the G7 virtual meeting did not work very well. It seems that there are disagreements between the American and also their European counterparts about many things, uh, including uh, what to deal with Afghanistan next after August the 31st. Your take on that? Unfortunately, we are in the middle of a maybe bigger game. We don't know. Uh, at this moment, the people of Afghanistan are so distrustful, so it's in a kind of very appalling situation because 
and the West as a whole came to Afghanistan 20 years ago. And they said that they will come to root out terrorism and they will help the people of Afghanistan to build their lives. But after 20 years, they left Afghanistan in a very irresponsible fashion. Mm -hmm. And they put the whole country in a very kind of chaotic situation. So therefore, it's really we don't know what is their next move. But let me say that at the moment, people of Afghanistan, what they expected from the West, that at least they should not leave them alone. They should kind of ensure their basic things is mm. need to survive. Unfortunately, that things did not meet. And they are very frustrated. So therefore, what really kind of, we don't know what to expect from the Western countries, especially from the American. Not to forget that the uh, first move was that the American signed an agreement with the Taliban a year ago mm. uh, on representation of Dr. Khalizat for an American envoy for peace. But since his signature, the whole country fell apart. So we don't know what exactly is the mystery, why if the peace was signed, mm. people of Afghanistan should have really kind of seen peace, but instead they saw war mm. and catastrophe and tragic. So what happened, where went wrong? And what is the content of the peace agreement between the American and the Taliban that the whole situation turned very bleak to the Afghan people? There are questions that we are kind of so, so concerned about it. Mm. So you mean, Mr. Ambassador, you do not know the content of that agreement? No, because that was a secret agreement mm. between Dr. Khalilzad representing America and the Taliban, mm. my brother, and all of that. Right. I remember your brother, your older brother, Ahmad Shah Massoud, said during his time that he is fighting not only for Afghans but also for the West when he was fighting the battles. Ahmad Massoud, his son, during his editorial letter to Washington Post, also quote that, that he's not just fighting for the Afghans, but also for the West. But according to what you have just said, there seems to be quite some disillusion that the Afghans feel about the West. How can I see the reconcile of these two sides? Well, when we say that, uh, when they say that they are not only fighting for Afghans, but also for the West, they meant that, well, for those values that they were upholding in the West, like democracy, human rights, men's rights, all of that values. So they wanted to say that, well, we are safeguarding these sort of values. So we are fighting to safeguard that sort of, so they are kind of universal values. So today, when we say that, why the West did such thing, because those values are universal, why did we withdraw from those values altogether to leave the whole thing to the Taliban. Why they somehow transferred the whole power to the Taliban? It was not kind of a defeat. It was not a defeat at all. Mm. That was kind of transferring the power to the Taliban and in a very sort of fashion that uh, was very ambiguous. I see. So therefore, why to submit the whole values like that, very values to the Taliban? There are all the questions. Mm. The Taliban has made a lot of promises in public, through their spokesperson, through their political leaders. Now, do you believe them? To what extent, when you see reality, you would say you believe? Until what time, Mr. Massoud? Well, the way we know them from the past, we don't believe them. But let's see when they promise whether they will do it or not. Let's say, for example, they promise that they will not enter people's houses. They did. They promise that they will not do selective killing. They did. Mm -hmm. They promised that well, they, will, uh, they, will, they, will, they will help the Afghan women, but yesterday they said to all Afghan women to sit at home, don't come out there. They promised many things, but unfortunately it is not. But I'm not saying that, well, we have put everything aside. We are saying that, well, let's wait for a few more days. What sort of government they are going to propose, and whether they will stick with their promise, whether they will stop the violence, whether they, most importantly, whether they will stop their attack on Panjshir and some other places, which is under control of the resistance forces. So there are all the things we have to see. Mm. Your family is a legendary family in the history of Afghanistan, coming from, first of all, your elder brother, and now his son, and you as well, Mr. Ambassador, as a diplomat. 
I really wonder how is your family digesting the decades of experiences you've been having in Afghanistan with different factions? Well, of course, uh, we have been uh, an up and down of our Afghanistan history for the past four or five decades. So therefore, it's difficult. But really what gave us energy to go on just to see what we can do for the people, for the country, for the freedom of the country. It's difficult. We have lost a lot of people in our family. Not only Masood, my little brother, but many others we have lost in this struggle that we are continuing to do so. Mm. And still we are continuing to do so. It's very difficult. But as I said, that what really kind of derive us to do so because we are doing for the good cause of the country. That is really the main thing that we are doing. It's nothing to do with the position because none of us, we were seeking. Masood, my elder brother, he did not seek for the position. I did not seek for the position for the past 20 years. I never asked for something, although so many posts were proposed to me. First vice president, the foreign minister, and any other minister, I did not accept that one. Mm. And of course, his son do not accept either like that. So we are really kind of working for a good cause of the country. And that is our way to go on. And this chain mm. will continue to be the case. Ambassador Masood, there are a lot of talk about the young Masood, Ahmad Masood, about his experiences in education. He was educated in middle school in the UK, then go to universities as well in the UK. And people say whether he's experienced in leading a resistant front and also even go to uh, military actions against uh, the very strong Taliban. A lot of people have questions, Ambassador Masood. Well, let me say those who are very experienced, they left Afghanistan, they could not fight. It's the question of will, of the resistance, of the motivation, of the good cause, of the people, of the constituency, and the backing of the people, they all counts. We have got many experienced fighters inside Afghanistan, but we need leadership to lead these things. Mm. So yes, of course, he may not have much of this experience military, but he is a very clever, smart, and he has got, uh, he's very charismatic, has mm -hmm. got the support of the people, has got the constituency, and the trust and confidence, all of that he has got. So we hopefully we can do it. All right. Ambassador Masood, how would you describe your relationship with the young Ahmad Masood? Well, it's very close. We are not only a friend that, uh, uh, that he is my nephew, we are friends, and he is my son-in-law as well. So we are very close. We are one family. Probably, Ambassador Masood, you have been hearing that the Chinese side has been proposing together with others, a open and inclusive government in Afghanistan. How would you respond to that call? Well, we do need a kind of open and inclusive government. That's what we need, really. We need. And we hope that China can play a very important role in that in Afghanistan. Because China is our major neighbor, and we have got border. That's our neighbor. And the threats, if it comes from Afghanistan, then that will affect everybody, including China as well. So before the threat spreads from there, we better to really curb it. And therefore, to push for an inclusive government, which could represent all ethnicities in Afghanistan, especially those ethnicities who are bordering China, that is our ethnicities. So if China really kind of pushes for that sort of inclusive government, then of course, in the future, that can be safe and sound. Mm. So that's very, very important. China also has been calling on for a peaceful transition. Now, once again, your response. Yes, peaceful transition. I hope so. And I hope that the Taliban will accept it. I hope the international community will really put pressure that they should accept such things like that. I hope that the Taliban came to that conclusion that they came by force. But now this is the time to really get a government which will be accepted by all sides I mean, this is a peaceful transition. Mm. One of the things the Taliban promised, repeated again uh, in their you know, press conferences and interviews of the spokesperson is not having Afghanistan be the place uh, that would harbor forces 
eventually would harm neighboring countries. That, of course, it is also promised to China. Now, uh, Ambassador Masood, how much do you think that will be implemented? What does it take to implement that? And whether you are supporting the fact that Afghanistan should not be used as a place for those forces to attack neighboring countries and others? Well, I doubt it as far. I mean, as far as I know, the Taliban, the Taliban is mixed of different forces. It's not Afghani only. It's different forces from across the world as well. You know that some terrorist groups have had connection for a long, long time with the Taliban. And without those groups in Afghanistan, the Taliban would not have come so fast to capture the whole country. So therefore, those groups, they are kind of very integral part of the Taliban. They cannot get them out. They cannot say that, no, not you are not in, because we got the victory, we are not in. They can't do that one. So now we all have to try to see how exactly we can do first fix inside Afghanistan. This is very important. Uh, not that they just got promised that they will do something or they will not allow something. Probably they may not have even the, the force and the will and the resources not to allow them. So it's difficult to really kind of just believe that, well, they will not allow sessions to happen. No, we better to really make sure that from the beginning, there is an inclusive government which could represent only Afghanistan and the people of Afghanistan, not any foreign uh, groups or terrorist groups which will be there under the uh, disguise of this uh, uh, Taliban. Mm. My final question for you, Ambassador Masood, is what do you think could be the best scenario and the worst scenario for Afghanistan? Well, I mean, uh, let's see, because I, I do believe that uh, maybe days or probably most probably weeks, the things will reveal which direction Afghanistan is going to go. Mm. And it's not very difficult to understand that, but especially for the Afghans, it's not very, very difficult. So we know which direction is going to go. Probably these days, Taliban may really try to put up a good image of themselves and promising is the whole thing like that. But when it comes to it, then we will know this one. But I think that let's give it some days, probably a week or two, then we will know which way Afghanistan is going to go. The best scenario is that, that eventually Taliban come to the census, that military victory does not win them the hearts and minds of the people. Mm. It's better to sit with our ethnicities to really work for Afghanistan. That's a good scenario. But the bad scenario is that they think that, well, we have already achieved the military victory, we can go on like 20 years back, and then we can achieve more. And that's the bad scenario because now 20 years gone, Afghanistan have changed. Mm -hmm. They will never be able to do it. So therefore, uh, the bad scenario will affect everybody. That's my interview with an important voice coming from Afghanistan. You're watching World Inside coming up. Inside the Taliban process of putting together an, quote, open, inclusive government, end of quote, straight from the Taliban spokesperson in Qatar. Next. In this episode of Travelogue, we dig deep into Ningsa's past to discover a region steeped in mystery, a vanished kingdom, enigmatic rock carvings, and a dinosaur that challenges our theory of evolution. The world is changing fast, taking all our lives with it. But we can change it too, by seeking answers to problems through discussions and debates. On World Insight, I ask direct questions to real people in the know, seek genuine answers, but respect diverse perspectives. Our live global debates tackle the most critical issues head on. World Insight with Tian Wei. Go beyond the headlines. Welcome back. This is World Insight. I'm Tian Wei. The Taliban is still in talks for what they call open and inclusive Islamic government, days after its forces entered the Afghan capital, Kabul. After a hasty U.S. exit from Afghanistan and resigned Afghan President Ashraf Ghani fled the country. Taliban promises nationwide amnesty and also security, but the international community is worried about 
how women's rights will be protected together with rights of many of the others. What the Taliban have in mind in terms of its plan for Afghanistan? Will we see an open and inclusive government as promised? My exclusive interview earlier with Suhail Shaheen, the Taliban spokesperson from Qatar. Take a listen. I'm joined by Suhail Shaheen, Taliban political office spokesman in Qatar. Mr. Shaheen, thank you for joining us. Thank you. We are Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan. For the last 20 years, uh, we were fighting the occupation in our country under the name of the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan. But of course, our deliberation are continuing. It is underway. A delegation headed by Mulasa Biradar, uh, he landed in Kandahar province mm -hmm. uh, for uh, that purpose, in order to uh, form an Afghan inclusive Islamic government after consultation with the top leadership of the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan. So this will be done soon. Earlier we've been hearing the news from another spokesperson of the Taliban suggesting there's going to be the supreme leader, there's going to be something like a ruling council, and there's also going to be a government headed by some top officials of the Taliban. How should we uh, connect the, the two sides of the stories together? Can you give us more information? Uh, one is uh, the structure that uh, right now we have uh, yeah, that uh, you are re referring to. And the other is the, an Afghan inclusive government that we, uh, we want uh, to include some of the uh, personalities, uh, Afghan uh, personalities, Afghan politicians in that uh, government. For that, uh, there is consultation going on. So uh, I think uh, bo both um, uh, can uh, go uh, to, together. Uh, because uh, a new government uh, set up, which is uh, going on consultation for that, uh, it will be announced uh, soon. But the other which you refer to, uh, we have uh, right now, we have uh, a top uh, leader and then we have uh, uh, a leadership uh, council. So this is, uh, set up is uh, active right now. The leadership council is made up of how many people? We know some of the names, uh, for example, uh, Mr. Yaqub, uh, Mr. Ha Haqqani, uh, Mr. Uh, Baradar, who is now already in Afghanistan. Uh, wh who are the other people's identity and what are their roles, uh, briefly? Some of them famous you uh, mentioned already, but uh, many of uh, the leadership council uh, members, they are also members of the negotiation team, mm -hmm. and uh, they are here based in Daha for the negotiation. Uh, so you can say about 60% uh, 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 to 65% uh, of the membership, uh, uh, members of the negotiation team, they are also uh, members of the leadership council. I see. What does that mean? Uh, another government declared by the Taliban of uh, uh, Afghanistan. Uh, who are we going to expect going to play a leading role in that? Is it going to be Mr. Baradar, which the press seem to emphasize and mention a lot, or there are other candidates? So for that, uh, the deliberation is for that purpose, uh, in order to for form a government in which all other Afghan politicians, personality, should also have participation in that. That mm. is uh, the uh, talks or consultation is continuing for that uh, purpose. What kind of participation? Can you help us to describe uh, the uh, format of uh, so-called uh, uh, cooperation and process consultation? So uh, may, uh, maybe some of the personalities in uh, 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 some uh, politician, Afghan politician, who are not members of uh, the Islamic Emirate of Afghanistan, they can be uh, including to be members of uh, cabinet uh, members or in other high uh, more, more portfolio. Mm. You promised, I mean Taliban, to have an inclusive government. Would that mean all factions, all ethnicities, all genders? and also all religion. What kinds of inclusiveness is 
exactly the description. Uh, negotiation which is continuing, uh, it is considering all Afghans. All Afghans are uh, considered, but uh, then they will select uh, some personalities which is uh, suitable um, for to be included uh, in the in the future government. So that is the general uh, framework. So when they are selected, they will be announced uh, to all. What kinds of selection process will that be? Will people vote? Uh, right now, uh, it is a vacuum, vacuum of, of power. There is uh, no time for any kind of election. Uh, the kind of, there is uh, no constitution. A new constitution will be um, drafted and then approved. So this needs a lot of uh, work. Uh, but uh, that work will be done uh, later. But uh, right now, uh, uh, it is, there is a need to have an Afghan inclusive government. Mm. So of course, uh, through talks with these personalities and, um, and politicians, and deliberation among our top leadership and among ourselves, those person, persons will be uh, selected. There are a lot of questions, though, in the international community about the credibility, first of all, of Taliban and then uh, the future of Afghanistan. You promised about the amnesty and also the protection of women. You also promised uh, the international community of uh, a transition of power. But, you know, people are worried whether that is true or not, particularly whether Afghanistan will harbor still terrorists or terrorists using Afghanistan as a jumping start uh, to harm the other parts of the region and beyond, Mr. Shaheen. About, uh, uh, they say that Afghanistan will be um, a jumping place, port for, uh, for others. It is uh, not the reality. We are committed not to allow anyone to use the soil of Afghanistan against any other, other country. If they have concern, they can show us there are uh, such people in this place of Afghanistan. We will take action. If they are not able to show us a place where all those uh, people are that uh, we are harboring, they are only expressing concern without any evidence, proof. So it means they are not uh, talking about the realities. They are only uh, talking about uh, the fears, the worries, the concern mm. they have in their inner selves, okay. not Sep on ground. Uh, understand. Several points to follow up on that. You talk about the anti-terrorists or any organization using Afghanistan as a jump star for harming other countries. ETIM is a terrorist organization, for example. Does the Taliban against ETIM, and will you make sure that they will not use Afghanistan as a jumping pad toward other countries and other places in the region. I have already told you on the basis of the Doha agreement, we are committed not to allow anyone to use the soil of Afghanistan mm -hmm. against neighboring countries in other countries of the world, uh, whether it is a group or an in individual. So I think that includes all. So. All countries should be assured about that. They should have confidence uh, in our uh, statements. And that uh, we are practically showing. Let me ask you, what about how women will function in societies? You earlier also told the reporters that the Afghanistan in the future and the Taliban will be uh, by Sharia law. But how should we understand the scale of freedom that women could enjoy and should enjoy uh, during that period of time? They are already enjoying. When uh, journalists are working, they can report. They mm -hmm. are, the journalists are returning. They can uh, criticize. Uh, even uh, the, uh, our official, the teachers uh, are working. The doctors are working. The students are studying. The schools are open. The universities are open. So. All of them are practically in areas under our control. They are doing this. Mm. So it is not only limited to journalists. So these are the ground realities. So 
mm. should not have any worry about that. Yeah. I understand what you're just saying, but what about uh, their wardrobe? Uh, do they have the freedom to choose whatever they want to wear? And also, will women be able to function in their society besides just working, besides just going back home? What about in the society? Yes, of course. So, uh, when uh, they, they go to job, they go to market, so that is that they are going uh, and they are participating in the society. And uh, there is not uh, when it's uh, one specific uh, type of uh, hijab. Uh, there is a different uh, type of hijab. So this is uh, uh, up to them. They are based on their work they can choose. We understand earlier, as you may know very well, Chinese State Councilor Foreign Minister Wang Yi uh, received a delegation of Taliban leaders. In fact, some of your colleagues uh, were there in Tianjin. Uh, how do you describe that encounter and interaction? And what role do you see China could be playing in terms of reconstruction and also keeping the peace in Afghanistan? Of course, we have uh, had uh, many uh, different visits uh, to China. Mm. And uh, they are uh, were playing their role in peace and consolation of Afghanistan. Now, when uh, we are there in, uh, in Kabul, and uh, they can a very important role in the construction of Afghanistan, and uh, oh, also in peace, in the consolation, their war, uh, role was very constructive, uh, and uh, they um, had appointed special envoys for Afghanistan, mm -hmm. uh, with whom we had uh, regular contacts, and they have uh, uh, appointed a new special envoy for Afghanistan. We are have contacts with him. And recently, we, uh, our delegation had a meeting with him. So they are, uh, and they were uh, contributing um, uh, positively to peace and reconciliation. And we hope they also contribute uh, to the construction of Afghanistan. My earlier exclusive interview with the spokesperson of the Taliban, we've been hearing different voices coming out of Afghanistan about where the future is for that country, to have a more balanced perspective of what's going on in that country. That's all we have for today. If you'd like to see more Search World Inside, check out our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter and Facebook. I'm Tian Wei on behalf of the team. Thanks for watching and bye for now.